in the era where interconnection has bridged geographical divides as well as fostered global understanding. Interconnection has emerged as the backbone of telecommunications in our world today. A question then comes to mind. Is it possible to connect every billion of persons living here on Earth at the same time regardless of the distance? Yes, it is. Good day, everyone. My name is Divine Table Olanini, a student of the University of Lagos, as well as an undergraduate intern at Allen Telecoms Academy. In today's lecture, I will be talking about the concept of telecommunications interconnection and network access. What is interconnection? Interconnection is the linkage of the networks of two operators in order to facilitate a state of seamless exchange of traffic as well as communication of services. According to the Nigerian Communications Act 2003, interconnection is the physical and logical linkage and the con connection of services of the same or different operators in order to convey messages from one operator to the other, as well as provision of services to their relevant users. Interconnection is the major backbone of network access. For example, MTN Nigeria Communications Limited and Globalcom Limited. We are well familiar with these two mobile operators here in Nigeria. If, for example, they do not interconnect with each other, then their subscribers stand a risk of not being able to communicate with each other effectively, and a barrier has been created. What then is network access? According to the Nigerian Communications Act 2003, access is the making available of communication services and communication facilities in order to enable mobile network operators to pass information from one operator to the other, as well as access to mobile network of activities, in particular roaming, and also the connection of equipment. Interconnection in our world today is not just a one-time thing. There are several procedures that guide it, and there are several requirements to consider before an interconnection can come to place. First off is the interconnection agreement. How is an interconnection agreement made? Before interconnection agreements can be made, there should be a request in writing from the demanding party to the one who will be providing the interconnection. And the requested party is required to assent to the agreement within 14 days whether or not it will be able to provide the form of interconnection required by the requesting party. In an interconnection agreement, there are several details which are to be embedded in it. One is the form of interconnection to be required. Another is the date of negotiation. That is, what they would the negotiations for the terms and conditions as regards the, interco as regards the interconnection will be commencing. Another is the point of interconnection and interconnection facilities. However, it is important to know that in a liberalized age like this, before the advent of tech phone, in the early days, different jurisdictions had ways of interconnecting with each other in order to make long distance calls as well as international calls. Now we have a telephone. This has enabled us to connect globally and bridge the distance between a state to another as well as a country to another. Now, there are certain regulations which guide the interconnection. No mobile operator can just come and say, this is how it is being done. There are certain rules which they follow. The essence of this regulation is to enable the new mobile network operator coming into the market, have a wider access to enter into this market without being leveraged upon by the dominant ones or the equivalent ones which have been in the market a long while ago. This brought about the need for the Nigerian Communications Act 2003. The Nigerian Communications Act 2003 established the Nigerian Communications Commission as well as gives it the power through the minister to make laws and regulations. One of the laws and regulations made by the Nigerian Communications Commission is the regulation on the telecommunications interconnection interconnection network, which is supplemented by the guidelines and co-location on infrastructure sharing 2021. Infrastructure sharing and co-location 
are two vital elements which are to be considered when interconnecting. Why? They are vital because the economic, environmental, and technical barriers which are also encountered by new mobile operator networks are barriers which can hinder a new mobile operator network to be able to offer end-to-end -end services to subscribers. But the emergence of colocation and infrastructure sharing has enabled these mo new mobile network operators to be able to offer end-to-end -end services as they can require services from the equipment ones, which are expected to be made on reasonably fair prices and terms. According to Section 96 of the Nigerian Communications Act, every mobile network operator has the right to request for an interconnection, and upon receipt of this interconnection, it becomes obligatory by the requested party to assent to such interconnection. However, the Nigerian Communications Commission can limit an operator's obligation in interconnecting. How, oh, you ask me? First of all, in a case where the interconnection is prohibited, interconnection ag agreement is prohibited by law, then the NCC can give the incumbent mobile network operator, which is being requested, to not assent to such interconnection agreements. Another reason is where the interconnection agreement and the details embedded in it pose a threat to life and safety. The main goal of the NCC is to foster a healthy competition while taking into account the integrity of the public network. So it is inimical for them to forcefully require a, an incumbent mobile network operator to assent to an interconnection agreement while knowing that it poses a threat to lives and safety. Nowadays, we see the issue of termination of interconnection agreements. Why is this so? And why do the termination come into place in the first place? One of the issues I will be talking about is debt. The Intercellular Nigeria Limited and MTN Communication Limited case. The Intercellular Nigeria Limited owed a large sum of amount to MTN Nigeria Communications Limited, which made MTN Nigeria Communications Limited to unilaterally disengage Intercellular Nigeria Limited from their point of interconnection. And according to Section 100 of the Nigerian Communications Act, it says before a, dis a, a disconnection will occur, there should be a prior written consent by the NCC before such disconnection can occur. However, before a consent is received from the NCC, there must have been a six-month notice from the requested party if it wishes to disconnect a requesting party from its point of interconnection. However, in the case where it is the requesting party that breaches a rule embedded in the interconnection agreement, there is a need for a three-month prior notice to the requesting party to provide a remedy for such breach. Failure to do so gives the requested party to disconnect the requesting party from that point of disconnection without giving further notice. Although this is still subject to the written consent of the NCC, that is the Nigerian Communications, Nigerian Communications Commission. Another question that comes to mind is what then should co-location and infrastructure sharing how then should co-location and infrastructure sharing come into play in this taking into account the economic factor one of the major challenges faced by new network operators when coming into the market of telecommunications is the economic factor however co-location and infrastructure sharing enables them to reduce their cost while still offering the best of services to their subscribers. Colocation, under the guidelines of colocation and infrastructure sharing 2021, is defined as the agreement between a network operator, that is two network operators now, to make use of the point of interconnection, which has been erected 
by the requesting party in the premises in of the requested party. We have three types of colocation. We have the physical colocation, we have the remote colocation, and we have the virtual colocation. The physical colocation is the physical erection of a point of interconnection in the requested party's premises. That is, it can be seen physically. A remote one occurs where there's an erection, yes, there's an erection of the point of interconnection, but it is not in the premises of the requested party. It is reacted in a nearby location, the closest location to the requested party. However, this is accessed through a medium by which the requested party is able to interconnect with the requesting party. What then is the virtual colocation? The virtual colocation is the embedding of different lineups in the equipment of the requested operator, which is still operated by the requested operator. Then what is infrastructure sharing? Infrastructure sharing is the agreement of the joint use of available equipment, which are subject to lay down technical and commercial conditions. Also, this infrastructure sharing, how has it helped the new mobile network operators? It has really helped them. In the case of a new mobile network operator coming into the market, they do not have to build that and install every necessary infrastructure when trying to offer end-to-end -end services to their subscribers or customers. For example, poles, ducts, fibers, and lead fibers. These are infrastructures that could be shared between mobile network operators that's necessarily having to duplicate such in case of economic adversities and this is really advised by the Nigerian Communications Commission as the best way to reduce the OPEX. Also, termination of agreements. As said earlier, I requested country cannot just decide to terminate the agreement between it and a requesting party without the approval of the Nigerian Communications Commission. However, in a case where the Nigerian Communications Commission doesn't limit the operator's obligation to interconnect, it then becomes necessary for the requested party to go ahead and approve such a request for interconnection within 14 days. An interconnection agreement, as we all know, is what binds the requesting party and the requested party. Before there can be, this can be said that there is an agreement, it must have been submitted and registered with the Nigerian Communications Commission, which then reviews it. And after reviewing it, the Nigerian Communications Commission is at liberty to request for an evaluation when necessary. And this need for evaluation should be communicated to the parties within 10 days. And in a case where evaluation is requested, the evaluation must be completed within six weeks. After the evaluation is completed, the next thing is for the parties to go back and revise their agreement for it to be in conformity with the standards laid down by the Nigerian Communications Commission. After an approval has been made, then there is said to be an interconnection agreement. Some Mobile network operators then come after the approval and opt out for an amendment. Yes, an amendment is possible after an approval. And this should be within a 30 days prior notice with the proposed copy of the document of the amendment. How then do we know that an interconnection agreement has been approved? First is the express approval by the Nigerian Communications Commission. Also, if a party within 10 days doesn't receive a notice of evaluation, then it can be said to have been approved. Also, after the revision of an evaluated agreement, it can be said that after the revision, if the agreement being registered with the Nigerian Communications Commission and fully accepted, can also be said to have been approved. I will be taking a pause here. To learn more about the concept of telecommunications, interconnection, and network access, kindly visit www.alliancewebsitters.com and follow Alliance Telecoms Academy on LinkedIn. I remain Divine Civil Olani. Thank you.